Hello, I'm Jay Norton. I'm the Soils Extension Specialist at the University of Wyoming. And today I'm going to talk about an opportunity to grow another crop in a, in a rotation that includes small grains, particularly irrigated. And in particular, I'm talking about sugar beet barley rotations that are common in the state. But anytime there's a small grain in rotation, we think they have this opportunity because they're harvested mid-summer. So typically that leaves enough time in these areas to produce another crop, a forage crop or just a green manure crop that will improve soil health. It prevents erosion, builds soil organic matter. We can get income from producing hay or, or used for grazing. And I'm going to talk about what we've learned about why you would want to do this and how to make it work. Um, the advantages are that for soil health, we've measured up to twice as much organic matter in rotations where farmers have been practicing this for a, you know seven or eight years or more. Um, it, it really implements all the soil health principles. It eliminates bare soil. You can see this is a, a typical, the typical practice right after barley harvest. This is just north of Powell last August. Um, it reduces disturbance. So we, we, we really reduce the amount of disturbance from tillage during that part of the rotation. It uh, diversifies our rotation by adding, you know, another crop in there. Um, and we're, if we're using it for forage, whether grazing or haying, we're integrating livestock into the system. Um, and there, there's studies that show we can get that income without negating the soil health benefits. So grazing in particular changes the nutrient cycling, but you still get all the benefits of having a cover crop if you graze it. And haying, you still get, you know, biomass and roots left for the soil. To make this work, we really got to uh, think about maximizing the window and giving this this crop every chance we can to produce in that you know the waning days of summer in Wyoming. Uh, think about you know cover crops really don't amount to much if they don't produce a lot of biomass that uh, for the soil or for forage. We want to think about planting the barley or whatever small grain as early as possible in the spring. I know that we farmers usually do plant it as early as they can, but this will give even more incentive to, to prioritize getting it in the ground. And then harvesting it as soon as it's ready, as soon as we can get there and harvest it. And then planting, if we're going to plant a cover crop or replant barley, we're going to want to follow the combine with the drill. Uh, just every day's every day counts, you know, and by September first, it's probably getting too late because you know you might only have a month after that for to produce biomass, and that's probably too late. Okay, that was supposed to be the drill following the combine. This is our our research drill that we use at Powell for plot work. So then the other the other half of this is really trying to maximize the growth. Give that give that crop every chance it can to produce maximum biomass. Water it uh, once or twice anyway and fertilize it as per a soil test. Now, the time to take a soil test is when the barley start and turn. Uh, it's, it stops taking up nitrogen then so whatever nitrogen is left in the soil is going to be available for that cover crop uh, and you, you want to know how much that is. We we got a, a average of about a ton an acre on these farm on farm studies that we looked at. Uh, the maximum was uh, just over three tons per acre. Um, I think about 25 pounds of nitrogen per ton of expected yield is what that crop would need. The total amount, so you'd subtract the residual from that soil test from 25 pounds of N per acre per ton of expected yield. Um, that's based on Wyoming fertilizer guidelines and a harvest index of, of 0.5, which means there's twice as much biomass as grain by weight. Uh, just trying to calculate what that annual forage is going to need to to optimize production. Uh, for if it's just going to be used as green manure for soil building, I wouldn't fertilize. I'd let that crop scavenge whatever nutrients are left in the soil 
So that'll keep those in the cycle. They take them up, they decompose, they make, and that becomes available for the next crop instead of being lost by leaching or uh, denitrification to the, to the atmosphere. There's three options that we looked at that, that are commonly used in, the, in these rotations. Um, just allowing volunteer regrowth. If there's a lot of shatter, like it shows in this picture, you can get a dense, thick, healthy stand just from letting it regrow. And it might be worth fertilizing it and definitely irrigating it. A lot of farmers replant barley, and this is an inexpensive because you can run the barley state into the drill and you can be right out there while the combine's in the field drilling behind the combine with the barley that you just harvested. Um, we, our farmer advisory committee recommended about 75 pounds per acre for that purpose, supplementing the, the volunteer regrowth. Um, and then the third one is a cover crop mix and quite a few farmers are, are doing this to get higher quality forage and more advantages for soil health. If there's a legume in the mix, it might fix a little nitrogen in that little window of opportunity. Um, one problem with this, and you can see that what happened in our field here, I don't know why we got strips of cover crop, but the, the volunteer barley was really competitive in this case because of the shatter that we had. And uh, to, make the, to make the cover crop mix work, you'd have to do something in a lot of cases to control the volunteer barley. Um, either uh, some farmers use a roller hair, or you got to wait for it to green up a little bit and then roller hair it to, to knock a lot of it out or, you know, use herbicide the same way. But you have to wait for it to green up a little bit before you control it in either one of these ways. And that's taken precious time, right, from the, the waning days of Wyoming summer. Um, so based on input from our advisory committee, we chose four broadleaf species and then the fifth species would be the volunteer barley as a grass with that, that good fibrous root system. We chose nematode control radish, we, we use flax, we use forage collards, and as a legume we use common vetch. Um, and then the volunteer barley we assumed would provide the grass in that mix, and it did. Uh, we didn't get a good mixed stand, but we, we got enough to analyze forage quality on each species and then uh, estimate what it would be like if, if uh, we got a good mixed stand, which a lot of farmers do get good stands of this. We found that the less barley in the mix, the higher the crude protein and the relative feed value. Barley is a good forage, but these others are better. So an even mix of those four species plus a little less barley. Um, gave us the optimum crude protein and relative feed value. So it might be worth spending the extra money on that cover crop mix if you're after the highest forage value you can get. And it's probably got advantages. A, a diverse mix of roots and plants has advantages for soil health as well. So to finish up, we think that following the harvest of Irrigated small grains is provides a window of opportunity for both um, soil health. That we we cover all the soil health principles: reduce tillage, keeping it covered, diversifying rotations, and integrating livestock. And we get a maybe an, an additional income stream from either grazing or haying that that uh, biomass. Um, you, but you really got to prioritize getting it in the ground as soon as you can and then doing everything you can to give it the best chance possible to produce maximum biomass before freeze up. And then uh, the three options we, we've observed that uh, volunteer regrowth can really be sufficient uh, if you got a lot of shatter and even worth irrigating and fertilizing to give the maximum uh, forage if that's the purpose. Replanted barley is going to assure a better stand and higher yield. It grows fast, it has that fibrous roots, it's a great cover crop and, and a good forage. But the mix, even though it's going to cost more, uh, a diverse mix of cover crops 
is a good way to go for both forage value and soil health value. Now we have a lot of questions about that. Does that is that going to pay off? And how many years, you know, out of ten, is that going to pay off? And what it, you know, in in Wyoming, we know there's been a lot of cover crop stu uh, studies and forage annual forage studies, and we know doing that improves soil health and builds organic matter. But what about in Wyoming? You know, it's a slow process because it only occurs when that grain occurs in rotation. So in beet, beet barley rotation, it's every other year, but a lot of farmers are going to longer rotations. So th this opportunity only presents itself three or, every three or four years or more. So it's a slow process, but, but we want to uh, do a better job of measuring the, the soil health impacts. And then, you know, what about all that? If everybody did it, there'd be a lot more forage produced in some place like the Big Horn Basin. And what effect would that have on on livestock production. Uh, we're working on uh, looking at that question. So thanks very much. I'm looking forward to any discussion and questions we have during the live events and uh, have a great day.